Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight I am joined by none other than Let Him Peek. You guys know my dude by now, but if not, make sure you uh, check the link down in the, the description and uh, go check him out. Uh, he's got most of the live stream, like dude live streams more than just about anybody that I know anyway. So uh, yeah, check him out man. If you guys like World of Warships content, it's, it's a pretty good, solid choice for you. Uh, he's a great player, obviously better than me. Don't tell him I said that, please. But, <laughs> but, uh, we're going to get out here. We're going to do some things. Uh, being without one extra division mate is a bit of a challenge. Uh, we usually run with Aaron. You guys know that. But, Aaron was not available on this day. And it was just Peek and I. And Peek and I are no stranger going out and putting people in submission. It's just what we do. But, this match is called Gratuitous Shima for a reason. Like, this ship is broken. Period. Nobody can argue it. It is the most broken ship in the game. And ain't even anybody that can question it. There's not a single ship out there that can do what this ship does with as little skill as possible. Now, the Shima by itself is a dangerous ship. But you put the Shima in the hands of a good player, and it becomes an overpowered monstrosity of devastation, the likes of which the world has never known. And you guys are probably rolling your eyes right about it. Now, Spartan, quit, quit overhyping things. We know how you do things by now. We've watched your videos. But no, seriously, if you guys think that you've seen the best of the Shima, you are sorely mistaken. Now, one thing I want to point out. We've got two destroyers here. And uh, initially, I knew there was a destroyer over here, but I don't have twist and track on my Shima. Because I run a Torp-centric build, because I want to amplify the thing that is the most broken about this, which is the amazing Torps. 23,000 damage you hit, and you get 15 of them. It's insane. The wall of skill that we put out there into that damage, uh, you know, I, I say damage, I mean target-rich environment, is insane. Now, they have an enemy, Udachi, that actually makes a beautiful play. Um, he goes up in there... All along the coastline. I don't see this very often from enemy destroyers, and it caught me off guard. Uh, now, we have gotten our second torpedo hit, and that gives us 37,000 damage. Yeah, that's right. Two hits, 37,000 damage! That's stupid! Why is this a thing? Seriously, wargaming. Please. Look at this ship and tell me why it's balanced. Anybody. Is there anything that's balanced about a Shima? No! It turns well. It's got a it's got great guns. It's got a decent reload. It's got stupid torpedoes and all of them. Oh, and did I mention it has a sub five kilometer surface detection? Like, really? Let me get this straight. So you've got torpedo, you got 15 torpedoes that do 23,000 damage a hit. They're doing 75 knots. And you can't be seen unless you're within 5 kilometers. Are you joking? Oh, did I mention that worst case scenario, if you think that you you just don't want to get seen, you can launch these torpedoes from like 13 and a half kilometers. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's it's stupid. But uh if you're launching at that range, I mean, you got enough torpedoes, you spread them out, you're going to hit something, right? Even things that you don't even realize are there. But uh, we just sent a nasty wall of skill into that damage, or I say it again, the damage rich, the target rich environment. And uh, yeah, this one's going to be a little bit more spicy as we've hit like every ship in that area. Seriously. And just like that, we're up to 138,000 damage done. Two salvos of torpedoes. I ain't even used my guns. Two salvos of torpedoes, I'm up to 138,000 damage. But Spartan, I've seen you do that in one salvo. You're right, you have. That's the problem. I should not be able to do 130,000 damage in a single salvo of torpedoes. But I've done it more than once. 
It's insanity. Why is this ship so freaking ridiculous? There has to be some sort of balance. Now, I get it. You put this Shima up against a Kaba, Kaba's likely to win, okay? If, if the Kaba doesn't potato into the torpedoes, which this thing is going to throw at a Kaba at point-blank range. 15 torpedoes are incredibly hard to dodge when they're doing 75 knots and you're within 5 kilometers, okay? Like, it's, it's pretty, pretty rough to dodge these. Like, there's no, there's nothing to fear in this. There really isn't. You know if you're located, so you can run away from people. You can do stupid things like this. We just set this division up for failure. There was nothing they could do. Three Yamis, one Shima. Guess who wins? Run. Wait for it. Two. And can we wipe them all out in a single salvo? Please give it to me, baby. One, two, three, four. Not enough to take him out. That's real unfortunate. But just like that, we're up to 245,000 damage. Guess what that means, folks? I just broke my personal damage record. Does it feel like I've done anything? <laughs> like, seriously? Now, you guys may have noticed, while I've been out here torping the ever-living crap out of all of these Yamatos, my team has just absolutely collapsed. We have a destroyer over here on the side that was with me uh, that for the last, I don't know, five, six minutes, hasn't done much of anything at all. Um, he did initially spot the, uh, uh, the Udachi out there and got the Udachi killed. I don't remember if he actually killed him or if it was peeking him, but he did actually spot them. Uh, now, this, this cruiser was trying to find me and failed because I know where he's at. I can see him. I can avoid him. I've got a 5 kilometer or 4.9 kilometer detection. Only thing I really have to worry about is a radar. Like, say, that Ochakov that's making his way towards me right this moment. Now, my game plan here was to finish off the Shimano and get into the cap. They have a Bismarck going straight up the middle. Peak is all basically all alone back there. I think he has some battleship with him, uh, and the Fletcher is... I don't know what the Fletcher's doing. Uh, I'll be honest. I think it's a Fletcher. I don't know what that is. I'm assuming it's a Fletcher. Uh, but... It's just... It's something that makes no sense. And now we're gonna catch him with one torpedo and hit him right in the bow for 19,000 damage. Because balance. All of the balance. Now, Bismarck is going to get into the channel and get away. I needed to go back to the base right now. But, I thought I could potentially get this base cap. And I also thought, I know this is a radar cruiser. But, it's an Ochakov. It's going to pop the radar at a longer range, even though he is only at 9 kilometers right now, which is less than ideal. But... I'm, I know he's going to pop his radar in any moment, and it's at this moment that I'm starting to feel a little bit iffy, and sure enough, he pops his radar. Now, here's why I say you don't have to panic, guys. You don't have to panic when a radar goes off. I've said it many, many times. All you gotta do is just dodge, bro. It's it. This is your worst case scenario, one of your worst case scenarios. You got a rapid fire Russian cruiser dropping radar on you at close range and what's he get off of us 3,000 damage just dodge turn away from the threat and get shifty that's all you gotta do you do that and the radars are not scary anymore now obviously my team is trying to defend the cap I vastly underestimated how screwed Peak was. Uh, I thought, you know, him and the Yami, I know how much he's capable of doing, that he had this in the bag. I'm not gonna lie. Um, and so that's why I'm sitting here trying to get rid of this Ochakov, who just radared. I can get this Ochakov and capture this base. They still have a destroyer over here as well. Their Shima is actually coming back to find me. I did not know this. I did not expect this. 
I figured there's Shima's down there damage chasing. But he did the right thing. He came back to defend his cap. And in the end, that is what wins this game for this team. That's Shima coming back and winning, the, or like getting over here to spot me. You can see, I'm actually contemplating coming in here. I get a Tor Pit. I know that that Ochi has no health left, right? At this point, I'm ready. Oh, I say no health. He somehow got more health than I was expecting. But I'm going to have to try to get out of here. I also know that they have a, uh, a fast recharge on their, their radar as well. But uh, the enemy Shima pops up behind me and, and catches me completely off guard. And that makes me lose all of my health. Um, now you can see I'm no longer detected. I dropped my smoke. I like to use smokes as get out of jail free cards. You can see I have an out. I go around the island. He can't torp me. So we, we managed to do that. But these torps are going to take some time to get past me. And I really need to turn up towards my base. I need to. Everybody is dead except our Fletcher. Our Fletcher has shown no real signs of being able to do a whole lot in this game. So I don't expect him to do lot, a lot. So that's why I am coming back. You can see I dropped two, three sets on the Ochi once again. Trying to get rid of that radar threat as I push out. Now I'm trying to maintain staying away from the enemy Shima. And staying away from that Ochi. But I'm also trying to get back to the base. I still believe that I can win this. It would be a solo warrior if I could do it. But I still believe I can. I'm in a Shima. I've got 279,000 damage done. And unfortunately, that torpedo just misses. He gets just enough of a gap to sail between those torpedoes. Very good sailing by him. Unfortunate RNG on the torpedo spread for me. But uh, we did try to take him out, and that would have been huge. If I can take him out right there, there's a good chance I can take out this Shima who's firing his guns trying to find me. And you can see how close we are. Like, this is where that detection comes in super handy, guys. You guys wonder why I run double concealment? This is why. Being able to sneak around the battlefield and, and be completely ghosty. All right? This is allowing me to get away from these guys and potentially get back to reset the cap. Unfortunately for me... I'm not going to get to reset the cap. I'm trying to get over here. I got to try to spot the Siegfried. And I really wanted to be able to uh, to reset him. But it's just... He's right on the edge of my range. And he's sailing away from me. So uh, we, we get ready to take the shot. But it, it's already GG, man. This game's over. We line up the shot. And come on. He's right at the edge of my range. You see what I'm saying? I can't actually hit him. He's at the edge of my range. Now he's starting to turn in. We're trying to get the shot off. We finally get the shot off, but it, it's game over. We did everything we could in this one. Unfortunately, just didn't have enough cooperation from the rest of the team. Peak did everything he could to hold the base. 279,000 damage done. Double strike, high cow, top of the leaderboard, 1924 base, and then a loss. Peak coming in third. Fletcher, to his credit, actually ended up second, but I'm not sure uh, how much he actually accomplished in this one other than the Udachi. So if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.